Hey songwriters, welcome to episode one in our 12-week series called GarageBand 101, where we're diving into how to use GarageBand to empower and aid our songwriting process. In today's episode, we're gonna cover two main areas. First, we'll address some of the most common questions that come up when you start talking about using GarageBand to make music. Then after that, we'll dive into our first video tutorial called GarageBand in 5 Minutes, and you do not want to miss that. So let's dive in. When you start talking to a group of songwriters about using GarageBand for making music, a few common questions or even concerns come up. The first one being, well, do I really need it? I'm not actually interested in learning digital recording. I just want to grow in the craft of songwriting, right? Well, let me start addressing this question with an observation. And this observation comes from working with lots and lots of songwriting students, both here locally, in person, and online. And I have observed that one of the biggest roadblocks to songwriters actually finishing their songs and then to releasing and sharing their music is that they have no idea how to use a digital recording program like GarageBand. Because when you think about it, if you don't have a recording program, then how in the world are you supposed to capture, polish, and then release your music for listeners to hear? You see, I have this theory. It's called the Most Songs Never Go Anywhere Theory. Now, I know that sounds a bit harsh, but I really believe that 99% of all songs, maybe more, never make it off of a cell phone memo or out of a journal. Now, surely you haven't piled up 50, 100, or even 300 ideas on your last three cell phones. Hey, guess how I know? Because I use cell phone memos all the time as well, because they're a great place for starting your song ideas but they are not a great place for finishing your song ideas. My friends, if you're a songwriter, you need a vehicle for helping your ideas go from a cell phone idea to a completed polished song that you can share with others. And that is exactly what a digital recording program like GarageBand is for. GarageBand and other digital recording programs are like this songwriting laboratory which allows you to capture your ideas, build on those ideas, and then to polish those ideas until you have this beautiful song that you're ready to share with the world. So I'm laboring this point to say that learning a digital recording program is not going to hinder your growth as a songwriter, but it's actually going to become one of your greatest aids for growing in the craft of songwriting. Hold on, time out. Now before we move on, I know that some of you are afraid that you have to be really techy to get this stuff. And the truth is no, you do not have to be techy to get this stuff. I mean, you're talking to Dean Davis, the king of non-techiness. I run away from tech stuff because it scares me. <laughs> the technical stuff. <laughs> so if I've learned this stuff, then surely you can with some time and with some effort. All right, enough talking for now. Now that you have an idea about the power of a tool like GarageBand for songwriting, let's dive into our first video tutorial in the series called GarageBand in 5 Minutes. Roll film! In this first video, I want to show you the basic ins and outs of GarageBand in 5 minutes so that you can start making great music right away. If I could only have 5 minutes of your time to show you how to write and produce music in GarageBand, this is what I would tell you. All right, start the timer and here we go. After you click on the GarageBand icon at the bottom of your screen, you should see a window like this appear. If you don't see this window, then you've probably already started a project. So just click out of that project and you'll get back to this window. If you click down here on the Recent tab, you can see the projects that you've been working on lately. But we're going to start with a brand new project in this video, so I'll hit the New Project tab and then hit Empty Project. Now that we have GarageBand open, it's simply going to ask you what is the first kind of audio track that you want in your project. We're going to keep it simple, so I'm going to click on this icon which allows me to record live audio using a microphone or my built-in microphone. And after I hit create, that quickly we are ready to record. But before we start recording, I want to highly encourage you to do two things. First, always record with a metronome on. This will require you to find and set your tempo before you get started, but it's definitely worth it. This is going to help you stay tastefully on time and enable you to use powerful editing tools later in the production process. 
Second, make sure you always wear a pair of earbuds or headphones when recording live audio. This will help keep extra noise like the sound of your metronome from bleeding into your recordings. So now that I'm ready to record, it is as easy as hitting the red button. I'll come up top, hit the red record button, and you can see it start to record. Now I'm going to go off screen, record a guitar part, and then come back and let you take a listen. So I've recorded my initial idea, and now let's take a listen. Alright, there you go, fantastic. Now that I have my initial idea, I'm ready to start building out my song. So I'll start by going up and hitting the Add Track button, where GarageBand will ask me again what kind of audio track I want to insert into my project next. Last time we did a live audio track, but this time I want to introduce you to the MIDI track. This is one of the coolest tools that GarageBand offers you. I hit Create and now a library of digital instruments is available for me to play and add into my project. I'm going to start with a piano. So I'll go over, hit the Piano tab, and choose a MIDI piano. And now check it out, I have a grand piano ready to play in my project. How do you control this piano, you ask? Very simply. On your typing keyboard, hit Command K, and it will bring up what's called the Musical Typing feature, which allows you to control and play MIDI instruments using your typing keyboard. How stinking cool is that? I love this feature. I'm going to go off screen now, record a piano part, and then I'll come back and let you take a listen. Alright, so I jotted down my piano part, and now let's have a listen. Alright. So there we go. It's a simple part. But it sure does add dynamics to your song when you can stack other instruments on top of your original idea. And now you see that the possibilities are endless. You can add as many live audio tracks as you want and have a lead vocal, a background vocal, even a second background vocal, as well as rhythm guitar and lead guitar, even a second one if you want. And then you can add as many MIDI instruments as you want and stack up pianos, synthesizers, basses, drums, whatever you want to make your song a full-blown production. So I'm going to go off screen, finish filling out this song, and then we'll talk about how to finish it. So I finished filling out this song, and I have my original guitar part, a lead vocal, a background vocal, a tambourine, my original piano line, a bass line, and a drum section. So let's take a listen. This is my first song in Garage Band, mm -mm, and I'm excited now. So how cool is that? You can record your initial idea and then fill out all kinds of instrumentation around it. So let's talk about how to edit this song. We'll start with MIDI, and there are lots of powerful tools for editing your MIDI performance that are found here under the Edit window. I highlight the track that I want to go to work on. We'll start with the piano part. So check this out. I can take any note within my MIDI performance and adjust it. I can make it earlier or later if it was out of time, or even adjust its pitch if it was the wrong pitch. How crazy cool is that? Now let's take a few extra seconds and talk about how to export and share your songs. All you do is go up top, click on the Share menu, hit Export to Disk, Name your song, make sure it's set to mp3, and hit export, and you're ready to share your songs with the world, or maybe just your grandma. Here's one last helpful tip. Before you dive into GarageBand, you should make sure that you've updated to the latest version, so that you'll have all the awesome features that it offers. To do this, simply go to the App Store and click on your Updates tab to see if you need to make an update. You can also search for GarageBand in the search bar and then click Update from the GarageBand page. So are you starting to see how a program like GarageBand can become a really powerful tool to aid you in your songwriting process? It's pretty exciting, right? I got really excited when I started learning this stuff. So if you're not excited, then I'll get excited for you. Ah, this is awesome! Woo!
Well, for our last segment here in episode one, we're going to tackle the other question that commonly comes up when you start talking about GarageBand, and that is, can you actually make high quality music using a free program like GarageBand? I love this question! Well, I have a few answers to that question, but I think the best answer is to simply let you listen to a few projects that were done entirely in GarageBand. Roll film! Ava Jean, you stole this heart Turned my whole world upside down And I still can't believe How such a little girl could come and hush My big important world Ava Jean, you stole my heart On that day when you came And you brightened up my world Is that exciting for you to hear and know that these songs were recorded using a program that you already have on your laptop, really basic equipment, and they were recorded in places like a bedroom closet. Ooh, how fancy. Now I'm not claiming that these are the best sounding songs in the world, but what I can say is that if I'm not writing good sounding songs or getting good sounding recordings, it's not because of GarageBand's lack of capabilities. It's actually because of my lack of skill. Ouch. That was a little rough. You see, I've used programs like Logic and Pro Tools, and I'm telling you that GarageBand has nearly every single capability that these programs do. The beautiful part about GarageBand is that it's free and that it's way more user-friendly than the other programs that I mentioned. So with a really powerful program like GarageBand that's free and easy to use, that means it's up to us to grow in the craft of songwriting and in our skill of music production if we want to get great sounding songs and recordings. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Here's a snapshot summary of what we learned today in episode one. First, learning a digital recording program like GarageBand isn't going to hinder us from growing in the craft of songwriting, but it can actually become one of our biggest aids in the creative songwriting process. Second, we looked at GarageBand in five minutes and learned some of the nuts and bolts of how to write and record in GarageBand. Lastly, we tackled the question, can you make great music in GarageBand? And the answer was, yes you can but it's going to require that you grow in your skills as a songwriter and music producer. This is Dean from the Songwriting Studio signing out and encouraging you to write music that matters. I'll see you next week.